Hey there, it's Wes again. It's time for my favorite video of the month. In this video, we're going to talk about how my portfolio performed in May. We'll discuss the big gainers, the big losers, and look at each individual stock. New this month is that I will also show you my passive income that I generate with my option selling portfolio on interactive brokers. So please stick around and enjoy the video. My current portfolio is valued at $13,213. And in this portfolio, I hold 23 different stocks, but ideally I would love to trim these down to a core 10, 15 stocks. May was an okay month for my different portfolio, growing from 12,800 to a bit over 13,200, 3% increase. This was partly because of capital appreciation and partly because of my monthly DCA into the ETF. I'm super happy with my performance and additions in the first half of 2024, and I will try my best to keep it up. And if you want to follow my portfolio, there will be a link to Didrin in the description. Regarding this month's spicy transactions and add-ons to existing positions or any nice sales, May was a very boring month. Besides the monthly buy into the high yield dividend ETF, I haven't executed any transactions in May. But, ca but I can already reveal that it was a record month for me for passive income. But more on that later. Let's take a look on the performance of the US stock markets of the last month. After a slow April, almost every stock ended in the green. And obviously the most notable one is Nvidia, which added another 30% to its already insane market cap. Nvidia's market cap now exceeds the GDP of huge European countries like France and Italy. Absolutely insane. And if you owned Nvidia over the past months, congrats. Now I want to briefly touch upon a new topic on my channel, option selling. I've been doing this for a while, but I never showed it on the channel, as the channel is all around dividend investing. But as both income streams add to my passive income, I want to reveal the amount that I made in May, which is $315 in premium. I'm very happy with this amount. And my current strategy is the wheel strategy, which involves selling cash secured puts. And if the put expires out of the money, I receive 100% of the credit for which I sold the option and I can open a new one on the next month. If I do get assigned, I still receive the premium, but I also have to buy 100 shares of the underlying option, which I don't mind because I only sell options in, on stocks that I don't mind owning, against which I almost immediately sell covered calls for even more option income. I do this month after month, and in total in, for 2024, I received $812 in premium, which I'm very happy with. Please let me know down in the comments if I should show you guys more on my options portfolio, what positions I hold and how I pick my positions. Now it's time to go over the performances of my positions over the last month. First up are my Vanguard ETFs. Let's start with the Vanguard All World ETF. It's still a 2.1k position in my portfolio, but as I announced in the previous video, this won't be for long. I'm trimming this position down and I'm switching to the Vanguard High Dividend. The All World ETF had a good month increasing by 1.55% and it has a dividend yield of 1.2%. It's a very solid foundation in my portfolio. It pays quarterly dividends and has over 3600 holdings. In total I'm up over 14% on this position. However, I chose to switch to Vanguard High Dividend, which is currently almost 3.2k and it will increase more and more as I DCA into it each month. The higher dividend yields makes it more interesting for me as a dividend growth investor for, as a foundation for my portfolio. It's a little bit over 2% yield versus 1.2% yield, which over time really adds up. This ETF has a po had a positive month increasing by 0.3% and in total I'm up 1.5%. Then onto the individual stocks. First, I want to start out with the automotive sector. I currently hold $460 worth of Volkswagen and $300 of Stellantis. Noteworthy are the juicy dividend yields of 7.6% on both stocks. Volkswagen took a breather, decreasing a small 0.43%, while Stellantis stabilized with a 1.1% increase after being down 9% last month. Up next are my REITs. Currently, I hold two REITs in my portfolio. First position is VG Properties. It didn't have the greatest of month, decreasing by 0.66%. I'm planning to buy more into REITs as I explained in recent videos about my top three REITs. My it's my bet for upcoming years. They were hit hard during the interest rate hikes, 
But as I expect rates to stabilize and eventually get cut, I think REITs can outperform the market. Besides, REITs have great dividends. The other position in Arbor Realty Trust was on my radar for a while too, and the market finally hit my buy order last month. I'm very happy as this adds a lot of dividend and dividend growth to my portfolio. Arbor had a great month, increasing 5.5%. And in two months that I'm owning this stock now, I'm already up 13%. Technical analysis and patience really pay off. Let's, let's move on to more safe stocks. Consumer non-cyclicals. Nestle and PepsiCo are representing those in my portfolio. Both huge enterprises to, that make up around $700 in my portfolio and offer dividend yields of 3.14 and 3.13%. Net noteworthy is Nestle that increased by over 4%, which is huge for a stable value stock like Nestle. In the consumer cyclical sector, I have the shoe giants Nike and Adidas. Both companies had a good month, increasing the a respective 3.1 and 5.2%. Especially Nike needed that after it was almost at its 52 week low. It is bouncing and I will definitely keep my eyes open on it. Now for a more spicy topic, Coinbase. With Bitcoin reaching new all-time highs this year, this stock increased a lot. However, now with Bitcoin stabilizing, so has Coinbase. Still increasing a nice 7%, but it doesn't compare to the insane increases it experienced earlier this year. It is currently worth $208, and I'm up a whopping 280% on Coinbase. I'm very proud of this. The cost basis for my position in Coinbase is even negative. So even if the company would bankrupt right now, I would still end up making a nice profit. I have a little bit Dutch bias in my portfolio with PostNL and NN Group. Two stocks I've held since beginning out investing. PostNL is a Dutch postal service company like DHL and UPS, and NN Group is an insurer. Both have very nice dividends, but PostNL has been in a long-term downtrend. But it showed some signs of life over the past month, increasing 8.7%. Hopefully it stays in this, upward, in this upwards momentum, regaining, regaining a bit of the losses it made. The dividends also make up for it, but how long can they sustain if the business doesn't perform well? Together they make up around $700, about 5.4% of my portfolio. A little American tech is good in everyone's portfolio. I'm very happy to have bought into Oracle. It has a great different growth rate of 11%, which outpaces inflation, and this is definitely a long-term hold for me. Price-wise, it increased 2.23%, and I'm also up already 15%. In March, I also bought into United Health Group. It's sitting at $461 and with a current dividend yield of 1.5%. But most important is its dividend growth rate of 13%. It will double its dividends every five years. Imagine your income doubling every five years. This is really what I love about different growth investing. Another new position I opened up in April was Texas Instruments. I recently made a video about it, why I really like this stock. So be sure to check that one out. Part of why I like it is it's 17% different growth rate. I'm already up 9.6% on this position. Just like with the other stocks, my patience paid off, and using technical analysis helped me buy Texas Instruments at a good price. Then there are the long-term high dividend payers in the tobacco industry. With Altria and Philip Morris, I have two tobacco giants. I'm only missing British American Tobacco. Together they make up almost $1,000 after I bought more into Altria last month. Both stocks had a small increase in April, with dividend yields of 8.48% and 5.13%. They are definitely long-term holdings for me. Both tobacco giants appreciated funny enough by exactly the same amount, a nice 5.55%. I would like to expand in the financial sector. I currently only hold Citigroup as a real bank, with a notional amount of $287. I would like to get more exposure, but should I do this in Citigroup or another bank? I really don't know. Let me know down in the comments which is your favorite bank to invest. Citigroup had a good month, it increased a nice 1.5%, but nothing really special about that. Also, I added MSCI to my list of stocks. This isn't a pure financial company, but more of a financial services company, providing index trackers and benchmarks for institutional investors. 
I made a video about MSCI explaining why it's a solid addition to everyone's dividend growth portfolio. With a double digit dividend growth rate, it would be good for everyone. It had an amazing month, increasing over 5%. And so far, all my recent buys from March and April have been performing amazing. If you follow my journey, you know I had a lot of these stocks on my radar for so long. But in my opinion, they're always too expensive. But then April happened and a lot of these stocks decreased significantly and my buy orders finally got hit. And now, now a month and a half later, I can harvest the first double digit profits if I were to sell them, which I'm obviously not going to since I'm a long term dividend growth investor. Last but not least, we have Starbucks and Walgreens. In recent months, I told you that I would like to expand my position in Starbucks, and that's exactly what I did last month. It is now worth around $500 in my portfolio, and I would be comfortable buying more. It was down very bad after earnings this month, and I opened also a leap option in my option portfolio, which is up more than $300 in one month. Do you know what a leap is? Let me know down in the comments if I should elaborate more on my option portfolio and what my strategy is there. Starbucks is definitely a stock I want to own long term. On the other side, we have Walgreens, which is really the problem child of the portfolio, and I do not know what to do with it. What would you do with it? Cut your losers? In April, I received a total of $39 in dividends. It is not that much yet, but it's honest work. And I feel that the, snow the dividend snowball is finally starting to roll. In the upcoming months, I will receive over $45 in June and another $36 in July. And I will reinvest into more dividend stocks. So, I received $39 in dividends, $315 in option premium, totaling my passive income for the month of May on a nice total of $354. For now, I want to thank each and every one of you. The channel has been doing great. We passed the 100 subscribers, which I'm very thankful for. Thank you for supporting me with all the comments and likes. If you, if you like my content, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel to follow my dividend adventure. Have a great Sunday everyone and I see you in the next video.